housekeeping items before we get into our message tonight. just wanted to read this. It says, Dear Brethren, I pray all are doing well and making plans to come to spring break work week at camp March 26th to 31st. The following list is not complete, but we'll give you an idea of what we will be working on and some possible tools you might need. We'll definitely need many hands. Uh, projects include enlarging the nurse's cabin door, uh, replacing the bleacher boards at the team campfire, rebuilding many of the porches for the cabins, stairs to the sleeping area behind the chapel, and the, the list goes on. Each evening we'll have Bible lessons, so it will be a great week all around. Come and enjoy the fellowship, working with the brethren and sharing God's word. And it goes on with a list of uh, meals that are going to be provided and, and uh, food lists. So I just want to read that. Uh, it says, Yours in Christ, Brother Sean Templeton, pastor of the Toledo Church, and he kind of heads up all the maintenance and repairs there at the camp. I'll put this on the bulletin board, but um, just be in prayer for that work down there at the church camp. And like I said, uh, I'll uh, try to uh, talk a little bit more about our church camp uh, as we get closer to the summer. And, and uh, hopefully we can make plans to go to that. Also wanted to share uh, Sister Joanne's phone number for anybody that wants to write it down. Uh, she did She did uh, seem excited when I asked her if I could share the phone number with people. So uh, feel free to, to text her or, or give her a call. But it's 541-844-8497. So 844 844- Eight four nine seven. So that's Sister Joanne's phone number. And uh, if you feel burdened or led to do so, definitely reach out to her. And uh, I'm sure she would appreciate it. All right. If there's no other announcement or word, then let's open our Bibles to Second Timothy chapter three. And we're going to uh, start reading here in, in verse 9, and I guess I should say from, from the beginning that this will be a little bit more of a lesson, so uh, I know I haven't done a lesson on Sunday night in a while, um, but uh, I just, by that I mean if, if you have a comment or a question or you have a, a verse you want to share that maybe goes along with what we're reading, then uh, please, you know, I'll try, to, I'll try to catch you and not make you wait too long, but... Um, please feel free to, to raise your hand and, and add to this lesson. We're going to talk a little bit tonight about persecution. And, uh, you know, the persecution that we may or, or, or may not face uh, because of being that light of the world. And, you know, we'll get to the scriptures that have to say this. But in general, um, understand that they're not persecuting us, right? They're persecuting uh, and they're rejecting Jesus, as the world always has. And, and when I say the world, that's mankind. You know, uh, God's own people at times can reject Jesus. They can reject the truth. Because, you know, as sinners, we do not like for the light to shed, to, to, to expose the darkness, to expose our shortcomings. And whether we're lost or we're saved, you know, Mankind, we, we can lean to our own understanding, and uh, we all have pride. Even a little child has pride, right? You know, uh, you feel that, you can feel it in a little baby. They arch their back, right? That's, that's them arching their back at you, you know? Uh, that's, I'm going to do it my way. And so uh, the world, is it's natural for mankind to reject Jesus. And so if we are preaching the gospel, um, you know, you, you can kind of hear it in the testimony of those that go out and, and, and talk to people. It's like, man, it's, it was refreshing. Nobody ran us off. Nobody, you know, sick their dog on us. Nobody, you know, uh, we're, we're throwing rocks at Because, it, I mean, it, that's kind of what you expect in one, way, in one way or another. So 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 9, he says, But they shall proceed no further... For their folly shall be manifest unto all men, as theirs also was. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, 
at Iconium, at Lystra, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. So the Apostle Paul, he tells Timothy here, of course, this is the second letter he's, through the inspiration of God, writing Timothy. And, you know, the, the theme of these letters is basically, if you can sum it up, is preach the word, stand strong, endure, because whether it's inside the church or outside the church, if you're preaching the word, you're always going to have opposition. There's going to be false teachers. There's going to be uh, seducers. There's going to be men that follow after their own lust. You know, and, and he goes on and on. Um, but he, you know, he tells them here, out of them all, the Lord delivered me. If we turn over to 2 Corinthians chapter 12 real quick, uh, we see, you know, the Apostle Paul, he, he knew, 2 Corinthians 11, sorry, he, he, he had a little bit of a pedigree, if you will, to back this up. Not that, not that we ever need to look at the man's pedigree or the woman's pedigree when they're speaking the Word of God. If it's the Word of God, it's the Word of God. But the Apostle Paul, Timothy, he, he told Timothy, you've known my afflictions. You've known the persecutions I've gone through. You know about the cities that I went into, and I believe it was Lystra. He went into the city, they stoned him, they drug him out to the, to the trash pile, they thought he was dead. I mean, they, they literally were trying to kill Paul, and they thought they had done it. They took him out, and they, they left him for dead. And he got up and shook the dust off, and he walked back in and started preaching again. And so he's telling Timothy, you know what I've gone through. You know I've done this for the gospel, and God has delivered me out of it every time. So he's not giving praise to himself. He's not patting himself on the back. Oh, I got this many bloody noses and I got this. No, but he's saying all that will live godly in Christ Jesus are going to suffer persecution. Every, everyone, children, parents, uh, where are we going to suffer? For? Well, you know, Romans 8 tells us that we're, pers we're persecuted, perplexed on every side. Right? It's going to come from all over. It could be from people that you never thought it would come from. It could be from people that you were totally expecting it, just differently. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, he says in verse 24, uh, Of the Jews five times received I forty stripes, save one. Now forty stripes, you could not whip a man forty times, because thirty-nine stripes was literally, you know, the, the legal limit that you could whip somebody. And that's where they get the term beat you with an, within an inch of your life. So five times this happened to him, where they expected you to just be on the verge of death. Thirty-nine different stripes, or thirty-nine stripes. That happened to him five times. Uh, thrice was I beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I have been in the deep. In journeyings often, in perils of water, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the, in the sea, in perils amongst false brethren, in weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness. Besides those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. Who is weak, and I am not weak? Who is offended, and I burn not? If I must needs glory, I will glory of the things which concern mine infirmities. The God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is blessed forevermore, knoweth that I lie not. In Damascus, the governor under Ardeus, the king, kept the city of Damascus with a garrison, desirous to apprehend me. And through a window, in a basket, was I let down by the wall and escaped his hands. So Paul, he'd come through quite a bit. And he continued to go through quite a bit. Uh, a lot of his uh, later life, he was, he was in prison. He was in house arrest. He, he was able, he, you know, he used those opportunities to speak to kings and governors and rulers, but it wasn't like he had the most cushioned life as a Christian, right? I've never had to escape a city in a basket from a third-story window or whatever. Uh, his life was on the line, and he continued to do it. And so, you know, turn over to Matthew chapter 13. If... If a church is going to go forward for God, and, and if you and I as individuals are going to go forward for God, we're going to, we're going to face persecution. We're going to face trials. And uh, I know this is kind of odd considering the message that I preached this morning, <laughs> where I thought you said if we love the Lord, nothing shall offend us. Well, that peace which passes all understanding.
understanding is going to be within us. And I believe that peace is what allowed Paul to keep going. Amen. That resolve, that nothing shall offend me. Nothing is going to hold me back. Nothing's going to make me quit. You can stone me. You know, you can put me on a slave ship and send me across the sea, and that ship can wreck, and I can be floating in the, in the middle of the sea, which happened to Paul, and then he got shipwrecked, washed up on an island with a bunch of heathens, so to speak, and a, a snake comes out of the fire and bites him on the hand, and, and all this stuff, you know, Paul just, he just kept going, just kept preaching, yep. He says in uh, Isaiah 26, 3, he will keep you in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on Christ. And trust in me. That's the hard part sometimes is trusting. That's true. That's true. But that confidence that we will be kept within that peace. Within, you know, I like Romans 12 too. That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Right? God, it, it sounds cliche, but let's not, let's not let it be cliche. Let's actually accept it. God is in control. God is in control, and His will is good and perfect. You know, uh, Matthew chapter 13 and verse 21. Yet hath He not root in Himself, but dureth for a while. For when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word, by and by He is offended. Now who is this talking about here? Well, this is talking about that individual that received the seed, which the seed is the word of God, and... He heard the word of God in verse 20, and he received it with joy. So he's received it, and he's on fire for God, and he's ready to tell other people, and he's ready to be a Christian. But then, when tribulation and persecution ariseth, because of the word, by and by, he is offended. By and by, you know, we get sidetracked. We get, because of the persecution, you know. Uh, I'm sure that Paul wasn't... <laughs> smiling or laughing or looking forward to the stonings, but it wasn't going to sway him. It wasn't going to throw him off. You know, and we've got to be careful that, uh, you know, the persecution in our life doesn't pull us away and doesn't discourage us from uh, uh, doing what the Lord would have us to do. Look over at John chapter 15. <clears throat> He says here that, you know, uh, look, if, if they persecuted me, then don't be surprised when they persecute you. Because it's, it's going to happen. We can't expect that if we're preaching the same word and the same gospel that Jesus preached, and he was crucified for, I mean, literally killed. They murdered him, you know, um, that we're going to get a different result. <laughs> uh you know, I'd like to think that I'm a nice person. I'd like to think that I'm, you know, uh, nice and, and respectful and all that. And we should be that way, you know. Uh, uh, you know, when we're soul winning, I shouldn't, I shouldn't pull right up into people's lawns and kick over their yard gnome while I go walk up their, you know, knock on their door. But, it, you know, at some point, you can be as nice and respectful as you want to be. If you're preaching the word, somebody's going to get offended. Somebody's going to, they're not going to like you. You know, they're going to they're gonna, uh, find something. But, he, you know, Jesus was perfect. Jesus was perfect, and they still found reasons to, to persecute him. To, well, to kill him, not just persecute him. But John 15 and verse 18, he says, If the world hate you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Remember the word that I said unto you, The servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept me my saying, they will keep yours also. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin. But now they have no cloak for their sin. They have no cloak for their sin. That's why the world hates the Word of God. Because it removes that cloak of humanism. Well, you know, my sin is okay. Uh, but this lifestyle is okay. Because these other churches, these other preachers, these other these, these Bibles that change things and, and, 
and uh, all that. It's a, it becomes a cloak. It becomes justification. You know, I've uh, heard from some in the congregation lately, you know, about these other churches and the message is, you know, live your best life. Be the best you can be. Uh, God will accept you for whoever you are, you know. Uh, I remember this song came out a couple of years ago, and uh, boy, it just it just really irked me. And, and I I heard some of our some of the younger kids that I that I, I know and grown up, and I heard some of them singing it, and it made me angry. And uh, the Lord gave me an opportunity, and I got to get some of that off my chest one time. And I said, listen, this nonsense that um, you were born this way is ridiculous. And that God loves you because you were born this way? No, you were not born that way. You chose to be this way. We all choose to be this way. It's a choice. You say, well, I'm a born sinner. Sin is a choice. We true choose to tra transgress the law of God. And, and religions and, and, you know, did you ever stop and think about how come Christians are pretty much the only true Christians? I'm talking about true Christians. True Christianity, they're the most persecuted group in the history of the world. You know, false doctrine, false teachers, people don't persecute them really. Because, what does he say here? If, if they, uh, if you were of the world, the world would love his own. If it's a religion based on humanism, based on justifying you know, I'm not saying there's not religions out there that are a little bit restrictive, but they're not that restrictive, right? They don't, they don't preach true repentance, true humility. You still get to hold on to a little bit of pride. You still get to hold on to a little bit of my way. People like that. People like that. And they're not gonna, they're not gonna persecute that. They're not gonna kill that. You know, uh, one of these days I'd really like for us to go through, um, it's a book called, it's a series of lessons called The Faithful Baptist Witness. And if you, if you ever want to read a, a book that will bring you to tears called The Fox's Book of Martyrs or The Trail of Blood, it goes through centuries of Christians that have been killed for Jesus. I mean, killed. And I'll tell you what, the Catholic Church was behind a lot of it. But kings, governors, uh, other religions... But you don't hear about other religions being persecuted like that. Why? Well, because preaching the word removes the cloak that is put over man's sin. And they don't like it. Right? What does the Bible say? That men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. Yeah. Right? The word of God, as, as soul winners, as, as uh, witnesses of Christ, we are the light of the world. We're shining that light. We're shining that light on the darkness and the the the, the wickedness of humanism. Um, all right, Second Thessalonians chapter one. The, we're gonna we'll skip over a little bit, but you know what convicts people? What convicts people is not my words or your words or your personality. What convicts people is not um, the fact that you don't do certain things or that you do. What convicts people is why you do those things for Jesus Christ. What convicts people is why we're preaching what we preach. Uh, why the message of God is what it is. Because there's a spirit behind the message of God, right? And that's the Holy Spirit. That's, the, that's that spirit of conviction. That spirit of, of, uh, of drawing people to Jesus. And, you know, people get their toes stepped on. They get their... What they work up in their minds is salvation. What they work up in their minds is, I'm pretty good with God. You know, you can see it when you're door knocking. You start talking to people, and you start getting into where, okay, now we're separating a little bit. This is what you're saying is salvation, and we're showing you something different. And you can start saying, oh, you know, all of a sudden people, oh, oh, I for, you know, I got to go. I, I got to, I just remembered that I have some. I gotta go. You know, it's all, oh, you know, my baby's crying. Well, your baby's been crying for the last 10 minutes. We've been standing here. But because you're getting convicted, now you gotta go. You know, uh, and that, that's just an example. What is that? That's not me. That's the Holy Spirit. That's the Spirit behind the living Word of God. And that's the power of the Word of God. And, uh, you know, over in John chapter 6,
6, Jesus was preaching. Jesus was preaching the word, and it says, Many were offended. Many were offended, and they walked no more with him. Even some of Jesus' own disciples couldn't handle the persecution that they were going to receive. Because, you know, the Jews, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the high priests, they were already, I mean, they already didn't like Jesus. But some of Jesus' own disciples were like, yeah, this is too much for us. We can't handle this. So they, they were offended already. Uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 5. He says, which is a manifest, uh, let's back up to verse 4. So that we ourselves glory in you in the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure. Which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God, that ye may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God, for which ye also suffer. Seeing it, is, seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. So, sometimes people want to make persecution, sometimes, they want to emphasize the persecution they've gone through. You know, and I don't think there's anything wrong with sharing our experiences, the persecution or the resistance that we feel. But at the same time, let's not make the persecution about me and let it glorify me. Because, listen, if we're getting persecuted, truly, it means we're living godly in Christ Jesus, which, amen for that. But that's not anything special that we're doing. That's only by Jesus Christ that we're able to do that. And he says, it's a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God. So it's not to lift man up or, or anything like that, but it is definitely a, a, a sign and an indication of the righteousness of God versus the sinfulness of man. If somebody wants to persecute you or resist you, and you know, I've seen and I've experienced and I think some of the greatest persecution that Christians are going to face is not from our strangers, not from strangers, it's from our family. It's from friends, close friends, you know, uh, and, and, and that's, that's really hard. That's really difficult, and, and uh, you know, some, some are experiencing that and facing it in, in situations that I've, I've never had to. But when that time comes, understand that that's a, I like, that's a manifest token. That is a sure indication not of your righteousness, but of the truth you're preaching. Understand that. I mean, there's no more surety that what you're preaching is, is true. And it's getting to them. It's getting to them. Otherwise, why, why resist it so vehemently? Why argue again? Why, you know, the nonsensical arguments that come out? You know, why? Because... We don't, mankind does not like for that cloak to be removed. We don't like for our facade or our lies to get challenged. You know, we talk about it, false religion. How come, I don't understand when you knock on somebody's door or you, you talk to somebody at work and you, they say, oh, I'm this, I believe this or I believe that or whatever, and they don't want to talk about it. Because it's weak. It's a weak argument. It's a weak religion. It's a weak, it's a weak faith. It's a weak construct. Listen, the word of God stands sure. Right? He says it's settled in heaven. Amen. Heaven and earth shall pass away. My word shall not pass away. You know what? A Mormon might show up at my door and they might beat me in an argument. I don't care about that. Because they might prove me wrong. They're not going to prove the Bible wrong. They're not going to prove God wrong. And also... I better make, you know, my responsibility is to study, to be prepared. And listen, if I'm truly following the Lord, God's, God's word will not return void. I'm not, I'm not, I'm just saying, God will, he'll put the words in my mouth, I believe that. I believe he'll give me the wisdom to stand up to it. But they may walk away thinking, boy, we really nailed that guy, we, we beat him, we, we won. No, he didn't. You know what? No, you, you didn't. It's not about me losing the argument. God's word is not going to be destroyed. We all walk away from people going, oh, I wish I would have said this. I wish I would. Well, next time. You know? But uh, I, if, if people are kicking against it, it's like he told Saul. It's hard for you to kick against the pricks. 
You know, people are going to kick and destroy and, and, and kick back against, against you. And they might attack, they might just ream you up and down. You know what? It's a sure sign of God's righteousness coming through you to their humanism, to their, you know, worldly wisdom. And, uh, you know, it's easy, it's easy for me to stand up and say this. It's easy for me to, you know, it's easy to stand in the locker room and give a pep talk. But you get out on the field and you start getting popped in the mouth. That's where it's, you've got to remember that pep talk in the locker room. We've got to remember when we go out, it's not personal. It's, they're resisting the word of God. They're resisting their Savior, Jesus Christ. It's, and like Jesus told us in, in John 15, if they hated me, they're going to hate you. You know, they're, they're, they're going to reject, they're going to reject us. Over in uh, Matthew chapter 5, he says, blessed are, uh, blessed are they which are persecuted. <coughs> blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. That word blessed there, it's not blessed by men, but you're, you're favored by the Lord. You're, you're smiled upon, you're, you're taken care of, you're favored by God. So, you know, and we can find comfort in one another, and we can encourage one another and, and all that, but I can't bless you. I can't, I can't, you know, I can pat you on the back, you know, I guess I, I can't do stitches if anybody, you know, punches you in the face, but, you know, God will take care of us. God, God, God will watch over us. Uh, yeah. He says, I've been through a lot of tribulation and persecution and stuff, but he says, he set the table before me in the presence of my enemy. And what's that table? He opens his word up and gives me understanding so I'm not confused, like, hey, they're dead just to me, they'll do it to you. So when my enemies are much around me, I find that he reveals a lot of his word more to me during those times, too. He, yeah, he, he can, you know, what does he say, uh, uh, your tribulation work with patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. Um, what Brother Ross was saying this afternoon, if, if I can repeat what he said, he said, you know, it, it challenges you, it tests you, not necessarily the persecution, but just the, the going out, and kind of, kind of engaging, All right? It's, it's easy and comfortable to, to sit, sit back and be like, well, I'm saved, and I've got Jesus, and I'm going to heaven, and Kumbaya, right? But we go out into the world and we get kind of, we get tested, we get challenged. But with that trials and that test, as you said, you know, that he prepares a table. It requires that you rely on the Lord even Amen. more, that you rely on his word, that you rely on his His strength. And, and those tribulations and, uh, and, and the persecutions, they do work patience. They do work faith. And they make your faith stronger. And, and they, they give you the patience and the understanding and, and the reliance on the Word of God. Uh, and, and understand, I'm talking a lot about witnessing to people. But, you know, even inside a church, this kind of goes back to what we talked about this morning. Inside a church, you may be standing for what's right. And there may be somebody who's bitter or somebody who's cantankerous or whatever. And they, they might come after you because you're standing for what's right. And you might get persecuted. Well, you're just siding with the pastor, or you're just, you know, you're just goody two shoes, whatever. Listen, persecutions are going to come from all different sides and angles. The devil will use anybody. He'll use anybody. Church member, not church member. Pastor, pastor's wife, pastor's kids, deacon, you know, anybody. He'll use anybody to persecute, to to cast that cloak. Of humanism back over uh, a man's sin. Uh, all right, Philippians 1, verse 27. He says, Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ, that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that you stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel, and in nothing terrified by your adversaries which is to them an evident token of perdition, but to you of salvation. Right? There we go again. Your testimony, your witness, is an evident token of their sin. It, it, it's, it's plain. To us, it's of our salvation. Right? Our witness, is, to us, is proof of our salvation. We can't but help but speak the things which we have seen and heard, as Peter said. You know, they told Peter and the apostles, shut up! 
We told you don't talk about Jesus anymore. We told you. And Peter said, we can't help but speak the things which we have seen and heard. So to us, it's, it makes perfect sense that we would tell people about Christ. To the world, it, it's, it's, a, it's a perfect sign of them falling short. Right, of, 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 wow, what I've been hearing my whole life, what I've devoted my life to, what I belong to, what I'm convinced of, it's just sin, it's just perdition, it's just against God. For unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sakes, having the same conflict which you saw in me, and now here to be in me. So this struggle, these trials... They've been given to us on behalf of the Lord. And um, it's hard to remember that. It's hard to embrace that when you're going through it. But this is part of that ministry. You know, he's not asking us to go hang on the cross. He's not asking us to go uh, be rejected by our own people necessarily. <laughs> Um, he's not asking us to be rejected by all the world, um, but he is asking us to be a witness, to be a testimony. And, and with that, persecutions are definitely going to come. All right, we'll finish up over here in 1 Peter chapter 3.
the persecutions, the sufferings is, is on behalf of Jesus Christ. It's on behalf of Him. And so, you know, if, if we're, we're going through that, if it's family or, or friends or, or co-workers, whatever it may be, um, you know, just find that peace and that comfort in the, in the Lord that uh, His name, it, it's for His name. And sooner or later, those people that are doing that, they're not going to be able to keep casting a cloak over their sins. The word is going to break through, and it's going to expose, and then it's going to be between them and the Lord. So, any other uh, comments or, or verses on that? All right. Well, then we're going to, that will conclude our, our uh, uh, that portion of the service. We're going to have another word of prayer, and uh, we're going to talk a little church business here what we uh, started our discussion on Wednesday night. So, I'd like to... Oh, can, yeah, can, go ahead. can I share a testimony? Sure, uh, sure. I have five children and three girls and such, and all kinds of things can happen. And one of my daughters is struggling with depression and suicidal thoughts and such, and she gets angry with God right now. And so, uh, she's all but forbidden me to even speak about him in her house. And we had gone over, to, and so I thought, well, I can pray that God would send other people to her then. And so we go over to her house to have dinner, find food for dinner for her and her brother now. Uh, we order Chinese food. And, uh, and then she changes her mind, doesn't want it. But uh, uh, then she tells us a story that she ran into this strange guy that just started talking about God right and left. And she said, uh, well, fellow, my dad's had me all these years and he didn't get through, so you don't stand a chance. And, she goes inside and he waits until she comes back out again and then says, uh, well, what's this about your dad and going on like that all the more? And, and then I said, uh, I told her, honey, I, I think I can ex help explain that. Uh, I've been praying because you won't let me talk to you. I've been praying that God would send someone to you. And she goes, no, don't even do that, Dad. And, and then uh, she uh, wants a, a fortune cookie. And I'm not talking anything about fortune cookies, but she has four to choose from. And she picks this one, and she, she read it, and I didn't know what it said. I forgot what it said until last night. I had some giant, and I got the same fortune, and I'm going to read you what it says here. It says, you shall soon make a, you shall soon make a long overdue decision. So it's just like God's using anything to get through to her. And I know when she said that, when she read that, I looked at her and she goes, don't even say a word, Dad. I'm like, I don't even have to. You're getting at other sources just fine. But I just, I, I don't see the end of this yet. But I know I can trust but God in this. And, you know, I, I, mean, I can't do what I would normally do, which would share God's word with her because she's running from that. But she can't escape that. I know that. And God's faithful. And he has to turn the heat up. He will on her. But. Amen. Sure. Yeah. Amen. And, uh, yeah. Amen. And uh, we'll definitely be, be praying for your daughter. What's her name? Catherine. Catherine. Well, we'll hold her up in our prayers before what? the Lord. And like you said, you know, she can, you can't run from God. The, the, his eyes are in every place, the Bible says. And so, you know, if, if they run from you or I, he'll send somebody else. That's for sure. And uh, that reminds me. Um, there was a lady who Ross and I talked to, and she asked to pray for her dad, Mike. Mike. Yeah. Mike. She asked us to pray for her dad. I guess he's he's saying I don't, I don't think she said it specifically. He was in the hospital. So, anyways, let's remember this this man as well. So, all right, let's uh, like I said, let's have a word of prayer and uh, visit. You guys are, are welcome to stay, but. It, Brother Ron, would you uh, leave us a word? Father, I'm grateful to be here tonight. Grateful for the lesson. Grateful for the Word of God and how it affects our lives, Father. We just ask that you do your will always, Father, and that we'll honor you and, and honor the lessons, Father. And, and uh, pray for each other. Uh, pray for all of our families and uh, for the testimony we heard, Father. Pray for this Mike guy, whatever his affliction is, and uh, grateful for the soul winning and the door knocking that goes on and so the results father and you honor that we're grateful for that father pray you be with our business, business meeting that we conduct and that we pray for all the 
members who couldn't be here, the ones who are sick, uh, particularly Father, and, and uh, that you bless them and their health too, and bless our lives and bless uh, bless us as we go out in the week next week and lead good lives, Father, and be, that will be honorable to you. And we ask this in Christ's name. Amen.